The potential of human beings is like an undiscovered ocean. A new continent. Stay pure. In a world of possibilities waiting to be explored, aiming for greatness in this journey, the ability to set goals can be considered the most important skill. Goals will unleash a positive attitude, liberate ideas and energy. Ships won't reach their destination without a goal. Your future knows only randomness without specific goals. In contrast, with a defined goal, you will move forward like an arrow aiming straight at the target. Within you lies untapped potential. And the truth is that you are only using a small part of those capabilities. It doesn't matter where your effectiveness comes from. What matters most is where you are heading. Desires and thoughts will boost your confidence, develop your abilities and stimulate the level of inspiration to propel you quickly towards your goal. You become what you think about most. The external world is a reflection of the world within you, creating a highly valuable philosophy. You will become what you think about most. When asked about what they often think about, successful people say they often think about what they want to have and how to achieve it. On the other hand, less successful and unhappy people often think and talk about what they don't want to encounter, busy with their own troubles, or about the shortcomings of others. Living without a goal is like driving in thick fog. No matter how modern your car is, you still have to drive slowly and cautiously, even on the flattest roads. A clear goal allows you to accelerate, move forward quickly, to achieve what you truly desire. Why don't people set goals for themselves? There are four main reasons for this. Most people think that goals are not really important. Or most people do not know how to set goals. And most people are afraid of failure. Most people are afraid of rejection. Many people start their lives like embarking on an indefinite journey in a directionless, mapeless world. It's like starting a business without goals and plans. They simply explore everything in the normal course of events. However, 12, 20 years later, they still feel dissatisfied with their jobs, unhappy in their marriages, and unable to develop themselves. Their lives consist of coming home every night, turning on the TV, and then hoping and dreaming that tomorrow will be better. Those hopes rarely become a simple reality because they themselves do not participate in planning for their future. Billionaire in the oil industry, S.L. Hahn, when asked about the secret of success, said that to succeed, two conditions are required. First, you must know exactly what you want. Almost everyone does not have a definite answer to this problem. Second, you must know the price you will have to pay when you achieve them, and then focus on solving it. Negative emotions are the number one enemy, the greatest enemy of success and happiness. Negative emotions from ancient times have been a harmful factor to individuals and society more serious than any disease in history. You must know how to free yourself from negative emotions. This is considered one of the most important goals for you to truly achieve happiness and success in life. Negative emotions like fear, resentment, hatred, jealousy, and anger mostly arise from four factors that I will explain below. After you can identify and eliminate these factors from your thoughts, negative emotions will automatically subside and have no chance to resurface. Then, positive emotions such as love, friendliness, joy, and enthusiasm will replace them. From there, your life will change for the better. Sometimes it only takes a few minutes or even a few seconds to press the A key. Don't try to explain more. Rise above others' opinions. Being sensitive to how others treat you can also create negative emotion. Self-image seems to be perceived by how others talk to them, identify with them, and even how they look at them. They have no concept of self-worth or evaluation beyond perceiving themselves through the opinions of others. When these opinions are negative, they get entangled in emotions such as anger, sadness, confusion, and even self-pity, self-pity, and despair. This explains why psychologists believe that most of what we do is to gain the respect of others, or at the very least, not to lose self-respect. Taking personal responsibility, the ultimate cause, is also considered the worst. It involves not blaming others for anything in the past, present, or future. Stop blaming others for anything in the past, present, or future. Eleanor Roosevelt once said that no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. From now on, consider yourself the master, responsible for every aspect of your life and your work. Think of yourself as being in this position, holding this position, and thanks to what you have strived for and achieved, success as well as tasted failure in life. You are the architect of your own destiny, the master of yourself. You must take full responsibility for everything you do and their results.
You must take responsibility for the risks and consequences of your actions. You must understand that to be in your current position, to become the person you are today, is the result of your decisions and choices. If you are not satisfied with your current income, decide to find better positions and opportunities for higher income. Consider it a goal, plan, and make efforts to achieve what you deserve. Always be the decision maker in your decisions, creating your own life. Think about the future. The importance of a leader is knowing how to direct the future. This means they always look at what they want to achieve, the goal they want to reach at some point in the future. Once you start thinking about your future, it means you are also starting to think like a leader and you will soon reap the results you desire. Determining self-worth, one of the most important qualities of leaders and successful people in every field, is that they always clearly define their self-worth, know who they are, understand what and represent what with a strategic vision, with the ability to clearly define goals, values, and ideals. When they always achieve significant achievements in whatever they try, they return to those who do not understand their self-worth, try to cope with their busy work, but often do not achieve everything as expected. Life is the experience of oneself from the inside out, and the core values within you have built the image of you as it is now. Every action and behavior you express externally is controlled and determined by the values within. Therefore, the clearer you define your internal values, the more accurate and effective your external actions will be. You truly want what? Tabor said, make sure that when you step on the ladder of success, it must be based on the appropriate statue in life. Many people have made efforts to achieve their set goals, but then they did not feel excited or satisfied with their achievements, simply because those achievements did not align with their internal values. Don't let this happen to you. Know clearly what you crave in terms of family, what your values are. Do you prioritize the importance of genuine love, encouragement, encouragement, constant reinforcement, patience, forgiveness, generosity, friendliness, and care for those who have a great influence in your life? These values will help you live much happier in the financial field. Where are your values reflected? Do you seek and prioritize the importance of honesty, diligence, frugality, show educationalism, and excellent discipline? These values will create conditions for you to unleash your potential, leading you to financial success. What about health? Values such as discipline, self-improvement, and autonomy are related to diet, exercise, and rest. Apply meticulously to ensure you have an ideal physique. Many people with straight aspirations want to build personal goals. As I mentioned, intense desire and passion are essential factors that help you overcome obstacles and reach significant goals in life. To have a strong desire, your goals must bear a distinct personal imprint. It means that the goals must be chosen by you, not chosen by someone else for you, or pursued just to fulfill someone else's desires. To establish truly effective goals, you must focus entirely on what you genuinely desire. This does not mean that you should not engage in the work of others. It simply means that, while setting goals for your life, you should start with yourself as the foundation to aim towards the future. What do I want to do with my life? This is one of the most crucial questions when setting goals. Because you cannot hit a target that yourself does not see. Once you have identified a genuine goal, apply your vision and ideals to maximize your values in this process. Sometimes you may feel that your goals are distant or unrealistic. However, your task now is to make them a reality, just like drawing your dream home on paper. Identifying ambitious and specific purposes will activate your subconscious. Any thought, plan, or goal that you can clearly define in your awareness, with all your abilities and efforts, will eventually be transformed into reality. Perhaps the most important among all the rules related to that is the law of belief. This law states that everything you strongly believe will become a reality in your life. You only truly see what you have believed. You are observing your world through the lens of belief, prejudice, and memories formed from before. You are not what you think about yourself, but you are what you believe you are. Change your attitude, change your life. All improvement in your life comes from positively changing your beliefs and capabilities. Personal development arising from changing beliefs and things lies within the ability and control of each person. When you believe that you can fully accomplish something, what you have been aiming for is within your reach. Doubt this. Then let me ask you, since you started your first job until now, has your income doubled or tripled? Have you achieved much higher income compared to when you started working? 
Yes, whether you have proven that you can double or triple your income or not. However, always remember that as long as you believe it can happen, it will come to you. Napoleon Hill also said, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Start the day from scratch. Suppose you want to lose weight. The first thing you need to do is check your current weight. Based on that weight, use it as a measure to track the progress towards the goal. See if you are making progress or not. If you decide to implement a personal physical training program, the first thing you need to do is determine how your current level of exercise is. How much time do you spend per day or week doing sports? And what is the intensity of your workouts? What exercises are you doing? Regardless of your answer, the important thing is that you take it seriously. Then consider this answer as a starting point to plan future workouts. What is holding you back? You want to earn a certain amount of money, but you haven't achieved it yet. What is causing this? What is the main reason you haven't reached your goal? You have to be completely honest with yourself to answer this question. Look around you and identify those who have the potential to earn the money they desire. What did they do differently from you? Do they have any special skills or abilities that you don't have? What skills and abilities do you need if you want to be successful like them? If you're not sure about the answer, meet and ask them. This is extremely important, so don't guess or wait for some chance. Assess your abilities clearly. Review the skills you possess and identify the areas where you have achieved significant results. What are the strengths that can help you perform well in your field? Which skills are you best at up to this point? Which skills or the combination of specific skills is determining your success in your job? Where can you achieve equality or excellence compared to others? The three keys to achieving peak performance to conquer your goals are commitment, excellence, and completion. When you make a firm commitment to a specific goal of yours and eliminate all unnecessary excuses, you become more creative, determined, and focused. Great individuals are those who can make clear commitments without loopholes and stick to their commitments despite any unforeseen events. Excellence is the second component to creating peak performance. There is a difference between completing 95% of a task and completing 100% of it. In reality, people often put in a lot of effort to achieve 92, 95% of a task, only to neglect and procrastinate in completing it. This is a temptation that you need to resist. You must discipline yourself to resist this natural tendency and overcome any obstacles to complete the job. The third key is completion. This is the difference between an open loop and a closed loop. Completing an issue in your personal and professional life is essential for you to feel happy and in control of your situation. Lack of completion in handling actions leads to stress, disappointment, and even failure. It will consume tremendous physical and emotional energy. How do you eat an elephant? Have you heard someone ask how one can eat an elephant? The answer is very simple. One bite at a time. This metaphor can also apply to you when trying to accomplish any large goal. How do you complete a goal that seems too big? You complete it step by step, task by task, deciding on solutions in each moment. Break down your long-term goal into shorter, more manageable goals such as yearly, monthly, weekly, and daily goals. To do this first, ask yourself, among the things I need to do, what is more valuable than everything else? Then, focus on doing that one thing best one step at a time, systematically. If you want to become wealthy, review your spending habits, set a savings goal, whether it's a dollar or a hundred dollars a day depending on your income. Create a savings account to set aside and never touch. As this amount grows, strategically invest it in carefully selected funds. Develop and maintain the habit of frugality in life. Gradually, you will become accustomed to and comfortable with spending reasonably with your current income. As your income increases, increase your savings over weeks, months, and years, and you will easily have a sum of money that can be used for various purposes in the future. You will quickly take control of your financial situation. Remember that you become what you think about most during times of difficulty and obstacles. Successful people have a special mindset that we call a solution-oriented mindset. Successful people often think about solutions while less successful people tend to think about difficulties and stop there. Solution-oriented individuals always find ways to overcome and go around, removing obstacles in their path. On the other hand, those who fail always think about their problems, who or what caused them, and feel upset or angry. How to increase income? 
To do this, think about related issues and ask corresponding questions. If you haven't earned money, what are you not doing to the best of your ability? Haven't you contributed enough value to deserve a higher salary? What more can you contribute? Haven't you done well in the tasks assigned to you to receive a higher salary? What can you improve? Are you not using your time effectively while working? How can you solve this problem? Are you doing anything more useful than watching TV in the evening, socializing with friends on weekends, and rarely reading or studying anything that can help you improve your skills in your work? Now that you have found the real issue for yourself, determine what needs to be done to change the current situation. The steel law of development here is a breakthrough realization for me. You can learn anything necessary to achieve the goals you have set for yourself. There truly is no limit to what you can achieve, except for the limits you set for yourself. If you are determined to become outstanding in the top 10% in your field, there is nothing in this world that can stop you from achieving that goal, except for yourself. Dohan Golgotha once said, To achieve more success first you must be a person of greater value. If you are determined to become one of the best in your field, the only question you need to answer is how you can achieve that. What determines your life is not innate talent, but rather dedication and perseverance. You have the right and permission to take control of yourself through proper decisions about yourself and associating with the right people in life and work. It's all about relationships. Everything you achieve or fail in is somehow related to others. The ability to build relationships with others in various stages of your life and career will be a crucial factor determining your success and achievements. It also strongly influences the speed at which you can achieve your goals. The more positive relationships you have, the more likely you are to succeed in everything you attempt. One person at a time, in the right place, can open a door for you, change your life and help you shorten the time to achieve your goals. The truth is, people often think about themselves and their own work. Anytime you suggest helping them perform better and faster, they will be open and willing to help you in return later. The law of reciprocity is not a clear-cut cause and effect law available for this law. First you give, then you can receive. First you sow seeds, then you will reap. Seek every opportunity to help others excel in their work. Every effort you make to help others will come back to you in some way at some time, often when you least expect it. List and prioritize in the simplest form. A plan is a list of all the activities you need to perform from start to finish. To achieve a specific goal or destination, to start the planning process, take out a piece of paper and list all the things you think you need to do to achieve the goal. Whenever you have an idea about a new activity, add it to the list. Regularly review them. Adjust your plan to make it increasingly perfect. Always remember that planning is a skill, so you can completely learn and train the skills of planning, organizing, and implementing actions towards the ultimate goal. It will also help you rise to the top 10% in your area. These things take time, and one easy-to-apply method is to take a sheet of paper and plan a project to accomplish a goal with various tasks. This way you create a tangible image of your goal and the steps you need to take to achieve it. It is very useful in work, helping you identify strengths and weaknesses in the planning process. Efficiently manage your time to achieve all your goals and become the role model you desire. You must manage your time in the most reasonable way. Psychologists agree that a sense of self-control is the key to happiness, confidence, power, and personal achievement. This sense of control is only obtained when you perfect the time management skills. Time management skills can be learned like many other skills. Regardless of whether you have wasted or tended to engage in low-value activities in the past, you can still change, become one of the most effective, highly productive, and successful individuals in all areas of your life. By learning how others have successfully implemented, you can become the best goal setter in your field. Review daily goals. I have previously said that you will become what you think about most. This is an immutable truth. Master Sun Bali, one of my teachers, said that anything you can hold in your mind consistently and continuously, you can achieve. This is the key. Nowadays, people often talk about the importance of the concept of positive thinking. Although positive thinking is indeed important, it is not enough. Dressing without direction and control, positive thinking can quickly turn into positive dreams and hopes. Instead of serving as a source of energy, 
creating inspiration and driving you to achieve high performance positive thinking can only become a factor more significant than a happy attitude in general for life and anything that happens to you whether good or bad writing the following daily goals is a practical technique take out a spiral notebook that you can carry with you at all times every day open your notebook and write down a list of your 10 to 15 most important goals but do not refer back to the previously written list do this daily from day to day as you do this many special things can happen your subconscious can only be activated by affirmations expressed in the present tense therefore you should write your goals as if you have already accomplished them when writing if you intend to have an income of fifty thousand dollars in the next twelve months you should write I have an income of fifty thousand dollars in a year instead of writing I will quit smoking or I will lose weight it should be stated as I do not smoke or I am at a healthy weight set deadlines for achieving the goals to increase the power of the goals written daily at a completion deadline to the end of each goal for example you can write I have an average income of five thousand dollars per month by December 31st dot 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 every success in your life is a triumph of discipline perseverance determines what you want to achieve take action and then persevere through all difficulties and obstacles until you reach your goal it is the crucial factor that determines your success and accompanying perseverance is courage perhaps the greatest challenge you have to face is conquering fears and developing your courage forgetting the name of the trick I once wrote courage is considered the pinnacle of virtues because all other virtues are based on it conquering fear fear is always the greatest enemy of mankind when Franklin Joseph said the only thing we have to fear is fear itself he meant that the emotion of fear creates anxiety tension and unhappiness when you develop courage and unwavering confidence a whole new world of opportunities will open up for you your conscious mind is the head office of your life its role is to deal with the information in your environment analyze it compare it against other information and then decide what actions to take but it is your subconscious mind that contains the great powers that can enable you to accomplish vastly more than you ever has before at least 90 percent or more of your mental powers are below the surface it is essential that you learn to tap into these powers to motivate stimulate and drive you forward toward the achievement your subconscious mind functions best with clear goals specific tasks deliberate measures and firm deadlines the more of these with which you program your subconscious computer the better it functions for you and the more you will accomplish in a shorter period of time as you set your goals and begin moving toward them it is essential that you establish a series of benchmarks or measures that you can use to evaluate your progress day by day and hour by hour the more clear and specific the measures you set the more accurate you will be in hitting your targets on schedule your subconscious mind requires a forcing system composed of deadlines that you have imposed on yourself for task accomplishment and goal attainment without a forcing system it becomes easy for you to procrastinate and delay and to put off important tasks until much later if at all there are three keys to peak performance in achieving your goals commitment completion and closure when you make a firm commitment to achieve a particular goal and put aside all excuses it is very much like stepping on the accelerator of your subconscious mind you will be more creative determined and focused than ever before great men and women are those who make clear unequivocal commitments and then refuse to budge from them no matter what happens completion is the second ingredient in peak performance there is an enormous difference between doing 95 percent of a task and doing 100 percent of a task in fact it is very common for people to work very hard up to the 90 or 95 percent level and then to slack off and delay the final completion of the task this is a temptation that you must fight against you must continually force yourself discipline yourself to resist this natural tendency and push through to complete it every time you complete a task of any kind your brain releases a small quantity 
of endorphins. This natural morphine gives you a sense of well-being, right, Elisha? It makes you feel happy and peaceful, stimulates your creativity, and improves your personality. It is nature's wonder drug. The more important the task that you complete, the greater is the quantity of endorphin that your brain releases. Very much like a reward for success and achievement. Over time, you can develop a positive addiction to the feelings of well-being that you receive from this endorphin rush. Even when you complete a small task, you feel happier. When you complete a large task, you still feel happier. When you finish the various steps on the way to the completion of a large task, at every achievement you get an endorphin rush. You feel continuously happy and exhilarated when you are working steadily toward the completion of an important job. Everyone wants to feel like a winner, and feeling like a winner requires that you win. You get the feeling of the winner by completing a task 100%. When you do this repeatedly, eventually you develop the habit of completing the tasks that you begin. When this habit of task completion locks in, your life will begin to improve in ways that you cannot today imagine. In psychology, the reverse is always true. The incomplete action is a major source of stress and anxiety. In fact, much of the unhappiness that people experience is because they have not been able to discipline themselves to follow through and complete an important task or responsibility. If you have ever had a major assignment that you have been putting off, you know what I am referring to. The longer you wait to get started on an assignment and the closer the deadline approaches, the greater stress you experience. It can start to keep you up at night and affect your personality. But when you finally launch into the task and push it through to completion, you feel a great sense of relief and well-being. It is almost as if nature rewards you for everything that you do that is positive and life enhancing. At the same time, nature penalizes you with stress and dissatisfaction when you fail to do the things that move you toward the goals and results that are important to you. One of the most popular movements in modern management is toward the balanced scorecard. Using these scorecards, every person at every level of the business is encouraged to identify the key measures that indicate success. Then they give themselves scores every day and every week in each of those key areas. Here's an important point. The very act of identifying a number or score and then paying close attention to it will cause you to improve your performance in that area. For example, if someone were to tell you before a meeting that you were going to be evaluated on how well you listened in that meeting, your listening skills would improve dramatically. Within a few moments, you would listen far more carefully and attentively throughout the meeting because you knew that this behavior was being observed in the same way whenever you select a goal, measure, or activity that is important to you and begin observing or paying attention to it in your day-to-day -day life, your performance in that area improves. One of the most helpful actions you can take in your own career is to set benchmarks and create scorecards, measures, metrics, and deadlines for every key task that you must complete on the way to one of your goals. In this way, you activate your subconscious forcing system. This forcing system will then motivate you and drive you at an unconscious level to start earlier, work harder, stay later, and get the job done. The third C after commitment and completion is closure. This is the difference between an open loop and a closed loop. Bringing closure to an issue in your personal or business life is absolutely essential for you to feel happy and in control of your situation. Lack of closure, unfinished business, and incomplete action of any kind are all major sources of stress, dissatisfaction, and even failure. In business, they consume enormous amounts of physical and emotional energy. Perhaps the most important ability in the world of work is dependability. There is nothing that will get you paid more and promoted faster than to develop a reputation for getting your task done quickly and well and on schedule. Whatever your goals, make a list of all the tasks that you will have to accomplish in the achievement of those goals. Put a deadline on every one of those tasks. Then work every day and every hour to hit your deadlines. Measure your progress each day as you go along. Speed up or slow down where necessary, but remember, you can't hit a target that you can't see. The greater clarity that you have with regard to deadlines and measures, the more you will accomplish and the faster you will get it done. A goal 
or a decision without a deadline is merely a discussion. It has no energy behind it. It is like a bullet with no powder in the cartridge. Unless you establish deadlines to which you are committed, you will end up firing blanks in life and work. Sometimes people ask, what if I set a deadline and I don't achieve the goal by the deadline? Simple. Set another deadline and then another if necessary. Deadlines are best guess estimates of when the task will be completed. The more you set and work toward deadlines, the more accurate you will become in predicting the time necessary to complete them. You will become better and better at achieving your goals and completing your task on the schedule. Every time you have heard the question, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. This metaphor applies to achieving any big goal as well. How do you achieve a huge goal? You accomplish it one step, one task, one measure at a time. Break your long-term goals down into annual, monthly, weekly, and even hourly goals. Even if your long-term goal is financial independence, look for a way to break that down into how you are going to use each hour of the coming day in such a way that long-term financial independence is far more likely. If you want to increase your income, you know that all income is a result of added value. Look at everything you do and then ask yourself how you could add more value so that you can be worth more than you are earning today. Go and ask your boss, what one thing do I do that is more valuable than anything else? Well, whatever his or her answer, we'll look for ways to perform more and more of that task and to get better and better at doing it. It is absolutely amazing how much you can accomplish if you break your tasks down into bite-sized pieces, set deadlines, and then do one thing at a time every single day. You have heard the old saying, by the yard, it's hard, but inch by inch, anything's a cinch. If you want to increase your hourly rate and your income, look for ways to get a little bit better at the most important things you do every single day. Read one hour per day in your field. Listen to audio programs on your way to and from work. Take additional courses whenever you can. These activities will propel your entire career onto the fast track. When you invest an extra one or two hours per day in self-improvement, the cumulative effect on your greater ability to get results can be extraordinary. If you want to lose weight, there's a simple five-word formula eat less and exercise more. If you discipline yourself to eat a little bit less, but eat higher quality foods and simultaneously exercise a little bit more each day, you can get into the rhythm of losing one ounce per day no matter how much you weigh today. If you lose one ounce each day, that will equal about two pounds per month. Two pounds per month will be 24 pounds per year. In no time at all, you can retrain your body and your appetite so that you lose the weight and keep it off for the rest of your life. If you want to become wealthy, begin to question every single expense. Set a goal to save $3, $5, or $10 per day. Put this money away in a savings account and never touch it as it grows. High. Invest it carefully in well-chosen mutual funds or index funds. Make daily, weekly, and monthly saving and investment into a habit and keep it up for the rest of your working life. In no time at all, you will become comfortable living on slightly less than you are spending today. As your income increases, increase the amount that you save. In a few weeks, a few months, a few years, you will be out of debt and have a large amount of money put away and working for you. A few years down the road, you will be financially independent. If you read 15 minutes each evening, rather than watching television, you will complete about 15 books per year. If you read the great classics of English literature for 15 minutes each day in seven years, you will have read that 100 greatest books ever written. You will be one of the best educated and most erudite people of your generation. And you can achieve this just by reading 15 minutes each evening before you go to bed. If you are in sales and you want to increase your income, keep careful track of how many calls, how many presentations, how many proposals, and how many sales you're making each day, each week, and each month at the present time. Then set a goal to increase your number of calls, presentations, and proposals per day. Set a goal to increase your number of sales each week and each month. Every day, measure yourself against your own standards in each area of your life. And analyze your activities carefully and select a specific number that more than anything else determines your level of success in that area. Then focus all of your attention all day long on that specific number. The very act of focused attention will cause you to perform better in that area, both consciously and unconsciously. 
If you want to be healthier, you could focus on the number of minutes per week that you exercise or the number of calories per day that you eat. If you want to be successful financially, you can focus on the amount you earn each hour or the amount that you save each month. If you want to be successful in sales, you could focus on the number of calls you make each day or the number of sales or the size of sales you make each month. If you want to be successful in your relationships, you can focus on the number of minutes that you spend face to face with the most important people in your life each day and each week. You've heard the saying, what gets measured gets done. There's another saying, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Your ability to set specific measures on your goals and then to keep an accurate record and track your performance each day will assure that you achieve your goals exactly when you have decided to or even before. Long-term thinking improves short-term decision-making. Uh, successful people have a clear future orientation. They think 5, 10, and 20 years out into the future. They analyze their choices and behaviors in the present to make sure that they are consistent with the long-term future that they desire. By definition, something that is important has long-term potential consequences. Uh, something that is unimportant has few or no long-term potential consequences. Future intent influences and often determines present actions. The clearer you are about your future intentions, the greater influence that clarity will have on what you do in the moment. With a clear long-term vision, you are much more capable of evaluating an activity in the present and ensuring that it is consistent with where you truly want to end up. Successful people are those who are willing to delay gratification and make sacrifices in the short term so that they can enjoy far greater rewards in the long term. Unsuccessful people think more about short-term pleasure and immediate gratification while giving very little thought to the long-term future. Dennis Whaley says, failures do what is tension relieving, while winners do what is goal achieving. Yeah? For example, uh, coming into work earlier, reading regularly in your field, taking courses to improve your skills, and focusing on high-value tasks in your work will all combine to have an enormous positive impact on your future. On the other hand, coming into work at the last moment, reading the newspaper, drinking a coffee, socializing with your coworkers, may seem fun and enjoyable in the short term, but it inevitably leads to lack of promotion, underachievement, and frustration in the long term. If a task or activity has great potential positive consequences, make it a top priority and get started on it immediately. If something can have large potential negative consequences if it's not done quickly and well, that should become a top priority as well. Whatever your fraud is, resolve to gulp it down first thing. Remember, motivation requires motive. The greater the positive potential impact that an action or behavior of yours can have on your life, the more motivated you will be to overcome procrastination and get it done quickly. Keep yourself focused and forward moving by continually starting and completing those tasks that can make a major difference. You see, time is going to pass anyway. The only question is how you use it and where you end up is largely a matter of the amount of consideration you give to the likely consequences of your actions in the short term. Thinking continually about the potential consequences of your choices, decisions, and behaviors is one of the very best ways to determine your true priorities in your work and personal life. Your aim in personal management is to spend more time doing more of those things that can have the greatest possible consequences on your life and work. Here, review your list and apply the 80-20 rule before you begin. If you have a list of 10 items to complete, two of those items will be more valuable than all other eight items put together. Sometimes it will even be the 90-10 rule that applies. Often one task on a list of 10 items that you have to do during the day will contain more value than everything else put together. This task, unfortunately, is usually the task that you will procrastinate on most readily. Once you've identified your top 20% uh, of tasks, you can then practice creative procrastination on the others. The only question is, well, which of your tasks are you going to procrastinate on? Procrastinate on the 80% of tasks that contribute very little to your desired goals and results. Focus your attention on those tasks 
that can have the greatest possible consequences for successful completion. William Matthews said, The first law of success is concentration, to bend all the energies to one point and to go directly to that point, looking neither to the right nor to the left. The more thought you invest in planning and setting priorities before you begin, the more important things you will do, and the faster you will get them done once you get started. The more important and valuable the task is to you, the more you will be motivated to overcome procrastination and launch yourself into the job. The ABCDE method is a powerful priority setting technique that you can use every single day. This technique is so simple and effective that it can all by itself make you one of the most efficient and effective people in your field. Here's how it You start with a list of everything you have to do for the coming day. Think on paper. You then place an A, B, C, D, or E before each item on your list before you begin the first task. An A item is defined as something that is very important, something that you must do or else face serious consequences. An A item on your list might be visiting a key customer or uh, finishing a report for your boss that she needs for an upcoming board meeting. These items are the frogs of your life. If you have more than one A task, you prioritize these tasks by writing A1, A2, A3, and so on in front of each item. Your A1 task is your biggest, ugliest frog of all. A B item is defined as a task that you should do, but it has only mild consequences. These items are the tadpoles of your work life. This means that someone may be unhappy or inconvenienced if you don't do one of these tasks, but it is nowhere as important as an A task. Returning an unimportant telephone message or reviewing your email would be a B task. The rule is that you should never do a B task when there is an A task left undone. You should never be distracted by a tadpole when a big frog is sitting there waiting to be eaten. A C task is defined as something that would be nice to do but for which there are no consequences at all whether you do it or not. C tasks include phoning a friend, having coffee or lunch with a co-worker, or completing some personal business during work hours. Never do a C task when you have a B task left undone. Keep focused on your A tasks throughout the day. A D task is defined as something you can delegate to someone else. The rule is that you should delegate everything that anyone else can do so that you can free up more time for the A tasks that only you can do. An E task in the ABCTE method is defined as something that you can eliminate altogether and it won't make any real difference. This may be a task that was important to you at one time but is no longer relevant to yourself or anyone else. After you have applied the ABCDE method to your list, you will be completely organized and ready to get more important things done faster. The key to making this ABCD method work is for you to now discipline yourself to start immediately on your A1 task and then to stay at it until it's complete. Use your willpower to get going and stay going on this one job. The most important single task you could possibly be doing. Your ability to think through and analyze your work list and determine your A1 -A task is the springboard to higher levels of accomplishment and greater self-esteem, self-respect, and personal pride. When you develop that habit of concentrating on your A, one most important activity, you'll start getting more done than any two or three people around you. Review your list right now and put an A, B, C, D, or E next to each task or activity. Select your A1 job or project and begin working on it immediately. Discipline yourself to do nothing else until this one job is complete. Practice this A, B, C, D, E method every day and on every work or project list before you begin work for the next month. By that time you will have developed the habit of setting and working on your highest priority tasks and your future will be assured. You can only get control of your time to the degree to which you've stopped doing things of low value. It is in this hour by hour and minute by minute choosing of what you will do and simultaneously what you will not do that your entire life is made. Your ability to choose wisely in terms of what you do first, what you do second, and what you do not do at all determines your entire life. The major difference between successful and unsuccessful people is that successful people are always working on tasks of high value, while unsuccessful people are always killing time on tasks of low value. And you are always free to choose. Your choices ultimately determine everything that happens to you. Single handling is one of the most powerful time and personal management techniques of all. 
Once you have selected your A1 task, you start on that task and you work on it with single-minded concentration until it's 100% complete. If you find yourself getting distracted or you feel tempted to take a break or procrastinate, you'll motivate yourself by continually repeating back to work, back to work, back to work. Plan your day in advance and create 30, 60, and 90 minute chunks of uninterrupted work time. These are time blocks when you can work without interruption or pause on your most important tasks. The fact is, all important jobs, those with serious potential consequences, require large chunks of single-minded concentrated time. And Earl Nightingale once said, every great accomplishment of mankind has been preceded by an extended period, often over many years, of concentrated effort. Each day before you begin, and as you go through the day, there are five questions that you need to ask and answer over and over again. The first of these questions is, why am I on the payroll? You must be crystal clear about exactly why you are on the payroll, and then focus your time and attention all day long on doing exactly those tasks that make the greatest difference to your business or organization. The second question that you should ask yourself all day long is, what are my highest value activities? Like, if you're not absolutely sure of the answers, go and ask your boss what he or she thinks your highest value activities might be. Whatever the answer, dedicate yourself to working on these specific tasks all day long. The third question you should ask all day long is, what are my key result areas? Your key result areas are those tasks that absolutely positively must be completed in an excellent fashion if you are to achieve the ultimate results of your job. Remember, your weakest key skill sets the height at which you can use all your other skills. Uh, don't allow yourself to be held back because of the weakness in one area, especially when you can learn anything you need to learn to excel. In that particular area, the fourth question you should ask yourself throughout the day is this, what can I and only I do that done well will make a real difference to my company? This is one of the best questions of all for keeping yourself focused and on track. What is it that you and only you can do that can make the greatest difference in your career? This will do more to help you in your career than any other single decision you can make. The fifth question, and perhaps the best question in all of time management is this, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? When you discipline yourself to ask and answer this question repeatedly, and you are sure that whatever you're doing is the answer to this question, you will start to accomplish two and three times as much as the people around you. You will become more and more productive. You will plow through more work of higher value and accomplish greater results than anyone around you. But the key to high productivity and performance is this. Dedicate yourself to getting better and better at the few things that you do that account for most of your results. Simultaneously learn to delegate, outsource, and eliminate all those tasks and activities that contribute very little to your results and rewards. The good news is that time management is a skill and a discipline that you can learn. With practice, you can become excellent at time management. With daily practice, make a list of your tasks every day before you begin. Organize your list by priority, separating the urgent from the important, and using the 80-20 rule or the ABCDE method. Choose your most important task and begin working immediately on that task. Discipline yourself to concentrate single-mindedly on that one task or activity until this is 100% complete. Each time you complete an important task, you'll experience a burst of elation, enthusiasm, and heightened self-esteem. You'll feel energized and stronger. You will feel even more motivated to start on and complete your next major task. Whenever you find yourself slowing down or experiencing the urge to procrastinate or delay, repeat to yourself, do it now, do it now, do it now. Discipline yourself to select your most important task and then launch into it immediately and stay with it until it's done. Now, here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, make a list of everything you would like to be, do, or have in the months and years ahead. Analyze your list and select those items that can have the greatest possible consequences on your life. Second, make a list of everything you have to do for the coming day. Let your subconscious mind work on your list while you sleep. And third, Begin immediately on your most important task and then discipline yourself to concentrate single-mindedly on this one task until it is 100% complete.
People who are going to be really successful in the future are willing to make sacrifices in the present in order to guarantee that future. They're willing to invest and save their money even though they don't have a lot. Knowing that with compound interest, it will grow and grow over time. They're willing to spend an enormous amount of time investing in their children. Knowing that this investment in their children, in time, love, affection, and support, will pay off for decades and generations. So sacrifice is the critical word. And sacrifice means that you have the ability to discipline yourself. The wonderful thing is, when you practice self-discipline, it actually makes you happy to practice self-discipline. To take control of yourself and make yourself do the right thing and complete it. Well, what is it that unsuccessful people don't like to do? Well, it turns out to be the same thing that successful people don't like to do either, but they do it anyway because they recognize that that's the price of success. Remember, the same things that unsuccessful people don't like to do are things you don't like to do either. And again, it comes back to our favorite word, sacrifice. Being willing to pay the price in the present to enjoy the great rewards in the future. All right, the next personal quality that assures success is you must determine the price that you'll have to pay in order to be successful and then resolve to pay that price. Many people say, well, just look at that person. They've got the nice house and the nice car. You never realize that behind the scenes, that person was probably working 16 or 18 hours a day, probably for five years before they got their break and five years after they got their break. The reason I've mentioned this is that uh, sometimes people start a business, they think, well, I'm sure I'll have to work a couple of extra hours a day. And as somebody once told me, when you start your own business, you only have to work half the time. You only have to work half days. The only challenge is you can decide which 12 hours it's going to be. In a recent study, they found that in our society, you work eight hours a day for survival and everything over that, you work for success. Every additional hour, whether you're working for yourself or someone else, is for success. But it's very important that you keep putting in those additional hours, whether it's extra reading, extra study, extra work. You are not allowed to say any other words to a senior officer except, yes, sir, I will do it. No, sir, I didn't do it, and no excuses, sir. That's how they train the top officers in the world, because they know that nothing makes a person weaker or littler than always making excuses. No leader could be a leader if all they did was make excuses. There's a turning point in your life where you become an adult or you remain a child. And it's like a line that you cross. On one side of the line, on the other side of the line is responsibility where you are now responsible for the rest of your life. On this side of the line is blaming others for your problems. Blaming is the major source of negative emotions and unhappiness and stress and failure. When you step across the line, you say, from now on, I accept complete responsibility for my life and for everything that happens to me. If you have a goal, you accept responsibility for achieving the goal. Blaming makes you weak and angry. It makes you feel inferior and insecure. Motivation only gets one started. To accomplish something, we need to put in work. There often aren't any shortcuts to attaining a significant goal. We may be highly motivated, but we'll get nowhere if we don't act. Many people struggle with engaging in repetitive action over a period necessary to achieve their goals, these people lack what's probably the missing key to the door leading to accomplishment, self-discipline. Discipline generally gets a bad rep as it sounds unromantic and tiresome and reminds us of the strict regimes of militaries and boarding schools. But self-discipline gets the job done. The Stoics considered discipline a virtue, along with other related qualities like perseverance, endurance, High-mindedness and self-control are the Stoics' favorite. Hard work and spending their days wisely were praised by the ancient Stoics and are thus embedded in Stoic philosophy. They knew that living in agreement with nature meant for us humans to use our bodies and minds appropriately by being productive, active, and contributing to the whole. People who are going to be really successful in the future are willing to make sacrifices in the present in order to guarantee that future. They're willing to invest and save their money even though they don't have a lot, knowing that with compound interest it will grow and grow over time. They're willing to spend an enormous amount of time investing in their children, knowing that this investment in their children, in time, love, affection, and support will pay off for decades and generations. 
So sacrifice is the critical word. And sacrifice means that you have the ability to discipline yourself. The wonderful thing is, when you practice self-discipline, it actually makes you happy to practice self-discipline. To take control of yourself and make yourself do the right thing and complete it. Well, when, what is it that unsuccessful people don't like to do? Well, it turns out to be the same thing that successful people don't like to do either, but they do it anyway because they recognize that that's the price of success. Remember, the same things that unsuccessful people don't like to do are things you don't like to do either. And again, it comes back to our favorite word, sacrifice. Being willing to pay the price in the present to enjoy the great rewards in the future. All right, the next personal quality that assures success is you must determine the price that you'll have to pay in order to be successful and then resolve to pay that price. Many people say, well, just look at that person. They've got the nice house and the nice car. You never realize that behind the scenes, that person was probably working 16 or 18 hours a day, probably for five years before they got their break and five years after they got their break. The reason I've mentioned this is that uh, sometimes people start a business, they think, well, I'm sure I'll have to work a couple of extra hours a day. And as somebody once told me, when you start your own business, you only have to work half the time. You only have to work half days. The only challenge is you can decide which 12 hours it's going to be. In a recent study, they found that in our society, you work eight hours a day for survival and everything over that, you work for success. Every additional hour, whether you're working for yourself or someone else, is for success. So it's very important that you keep putting in those additional hours, whether it's extra reading, extra study, extra work. You are not allowed to say any other words to a senior officer except, yes, sir, I will do it. No, sir, I didn't do it. And no excuses, sir. That's how they train the top officers in the world, because they know that nothing makes a person weaker or littler than always making excuses. No leader could be a leader if all they did was make excuses. There's a turning point in your life where you become an adult or you remain a child. And it's like a line that you cross on one side of the line. On the other side of the line is responsibility where you are now responsible for the rest of your life. On this side of the line is blaming others for your problems. Blaming is the major source of negative emotions and unhappiness and stress and failure. When you step across the line, you say, from now on, I accept complete responsibility for my life and for everything that happens to me. If you have a goal, you accept responsibility for achieving the goal. <laughs> Blaming makes you weak and angry. It makes you feel inferior and insecure. Motivation only gets one started. To accomplish something, we need to put in work. There often aren't any shortcuts to attaining a significant goal. We may be highly motivated. We'll get nowhere if we don't act. Many people struggle with engaging in repetitive action over a period necessary to achieve their goals. These people lack what's probably the missing key to the door leading to accomplishment. Self-discipline. Discipline generally gets a bad rep as it sounds unromantic and tiresome and reminds us of the strict regimes of militaries and boarding schools. But self-discipline gets the job done. The Stoics considered discipline a virtue, along with other related qualities like perseverance, endurance, high-mindedness, and self-control, are the Stoics' favorite. Hard work and spending their days wisely were praised by the ancient Stoics and are thus embedded in Stoic philosophy. They knew that living in agreement with nature meant for us humans to use our bodies and minds appropriately by being productive, active, and contributing to the whole. Being self-disciplined becomes much easier if we have a strong and clear aim, and it all starts with your thinking. And to think well requires that you practice a couple of techniques. The rule is that fast decisions are usually wrong decisions, especially fast decisions involving people or money. So uh, if you're going to make a decision that has long-term consequences, then you have to give it a lot of thought. And the more carefully you think about a decision, the better the, the quality of that decision will be when you finally make it. Superior people, through experience and through painful experience, learn to take their time in making important decisions. So one of the very best ways that you can develop the discipline of clear thinking is to sit in solitude for 30 to 60 minutes when you have a major problem or a major issue in your life. You'll start to go calm and all the energy, all the fidgetiness will disappear. After the 30 minute point, ideas will start to flow like a river through your mind. If you've never done it before, first time you do it, you'll get 
a result, an insight, an idea, a solution to a problem, an idea to achieve a goal. Every time you sit quietly in solitude for 30 to 60 minutes, you'll get ideas that may save you years of hard work. Now, here's another way to think better. Take a sheet of paper and think on paper. Write down every detail. How it happened, what's going on, the problems, the concerns, the costs, who's involved. Sometimes exactly the right choice pops out at you. It becomes clear. But you would not have triggered that super conscious solution if you hadn't taken the time to think on paper. Aristotle once said that wisdom, which is the greatest of all human desires, is the ability to make good decisions. Reflecting on your experiences, and the best way to do that is to go for a walk. Just go for a walk for 30 or 60 minutes while walking and reflecting upon something going on at work or at home. You'll be amazed at the ETs, the quality of ideas that will come into your mind. Here's the key to good thinking. Be open to doing something completely different. It opens up your mind and your perspective so you can see all kinds of possibilities that you may not have seen before. Clear thinking is the first discipline. It is the discipline practiced by the most successful, happiest, and wealthiest people in our society. Now the second major discipline is the discipline of daily goal setting. If you don't have your goals in writing, then they're not ready goals at all, they're merely wishes. Write them out very specifically and clearly. Then every single morning, rewrite your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed. For instance, if your goal is to earn $50,000 a year every single morning, write, I earn $50,000 a year. Every single evening, take about five to ten minutes. Instead of watching television, sit down and review what you've done in the course of the day. Ask yourself, what have I done right today that's moved me toward my goals? And, it, and the second question is, what would I do differently if I had today to do over again? If, if you ask yourself those two questions, in the next 30 days, you'll accomplish more than you accomplished in the last six months. Every time you write your goals down, you're programming them into your it's subconscious mind. People come up to me at every single seminar and say, it was incredible, I started to write my goals every day and uh, I accomplished eight of them in six months. I accomplished five in a week. I accomplished most of them within 12 months. It's transformed my life. Now the third discipline is the discipline of courage because what I've found over the years is that brave people, courageous people, are not people who are not afraid. They're simply people who face their fears, confront their fears. Now, fear and courage tend to be habits. If you're afraid and you force yourself to confront the fear, it becomes a habit to confront the fear whenever you find something that you're afraid of. Most of these fears disappear when you confront them head on. Mm. You want to demonstrate to yourself that you can face down a fear and look it square in the eye. So, here's an exercise for you. Identify one fear situation in your life today and use that as your challenge. Use that as your test case. You say, you know what, I'm going to face this fear down. I'm going to hammer it. I'm going to smash it. I'm going to look it right in the eye. I'm going to deal with it directly, head on, like a car hitting a wall, until the fear is gone. Once you've done that, you'll know that nothing that you're afraid of can stop you. Now, the fourth discipline is the discipline of daily time management. Disciplining yourself to plan your days thoroughly before you begin will save you at least 10 minutes for every minute you spend in planning. And according to the research, it will increase your productivity by 25 to 50 percent, maybe even double your productivity. For every day that you plan, begin the discipline of daily time management by making a list. Start off with a sheet of paper. Again, think on paper and write down everything you have to do in the course of the day. The very best time to make this list is the night before. You often wake up in the morning with great ideas to implement your plan. Then you organize your list by priority. Before you begin, use the 80 SARS 20 rule that says that 20% of the items on your list will account for 80% of the value. It is the key to supercharging the quality of your life and your results. If you can start every morning with a list organized by priority and start on your number one task and stay with it till it's done, you will supercharge your life. You'll get twice as much done on any day where you start and complete your major task first thing than any other day. The discipline of time management then spreads to 
all your other disciplines. Now, the fifth discipline is the discipline of regular saving and investing. Individuals, families, and even societies are stable and prosperous to the degree to which they save money. Begin today to save 10% of your earnings off the top and never touch it. This is your fund for long-term financial accumulation and you never use it for any other reason except to assure your financial future. When you regularly put away 10% of your earnings, you soon become comfortable living on the other 90%. Many people start by saving 10% of their income and then graduate to saving 15%, 20%, and even more. And their financial lives change dramatically as a result. Instead of saying, well, I like spending money, you say, I like saving money. And you begin to think of how much you enjoy having money in the bank, um, how much you enjoy saving, how much you enjoy delayed gratification, how much you enjoy the idea of moving toward financial independence. So soon you develop the habit of living on less than you earn and you change your thinking from I enjoy spending to I enjoy saving. It's easy to lose money, but it's hard to make it and keep it. And it's the most important discipline of all. Another discipline is to pay cash as often as possible and for as much as possible. The very act of paying cash really hypersensitizes you to how much it is costing and causes you to spend less money. The primary reason why you save your money and accumulate it carefully is that it gives you two things. First of all, it gives you freedom. The second thing it gives you is opportunity. As an adult, you should always have opportunity money put aside. And when you have it, you feel great about yourself. The person with a little money, the person with no money always feels inferior, anxious, worried, concerned, irritable, and short-tempered. Now, the sixth discipline is the discipline of continuous learning. As Peter Drucker says, knowledge and skill are the keys to the 21st century, and the only thing that will be relevant, the only skill that will be relevant in the 21st century, is the ability to learn new skills because virtually everything you know is becoming obsolete at a rapid rate. If you're not continually learning and upgrading your knowledge and skills, you're not staying in the same place. If you're not constantly learning, you're actually falling behind. Uh, so here are the three keys to continuous learning. Number one is read in your field 30 to 60 minutes each day. The very best places to read, by the way, are books. Read books, the best-selling books written by the most successful people in your field because books contain a wealth of riches that can enable you to function at a far higher level and get much better results than you could before. The second thing you do is take every course that you possibly can. The courses and seminars that are available to you in your field that are given by professionals that are courses that have been developed over years and years and years. They have been tested and tested and tested. When you take a course, you can uh, learn enough information in one or two days more than you could learn in two or three years or maybe even a lifetime. All distilled and put together. The third way that you can upgrade your skills is by listening to audio programs in your car. The more energy you have, the bigger goals you set for yourself, the more you persist when you invest in yourself and you read and learn and upgrade your skills. You're telling yourself, wow, I'm a person with a great future. It's up to me to maximize my potential. Now, the seventh discipline is the discipline of hard work in the studies of self-made millionaires. Again, they said, I didn't have better education, better talent, better knowledge, but I was willing to work harder than anyone else. Most other people are trying to get by on five days a week. And then during those five days a week, they don't work very hard at all. The harder you work, the luckier you get, the harder you work. The more opportunities you have, the more doors open up to you, the more opportunities you see. If you look at an entrepreneurial startup, a business that's being run by somebody who's really driving it forward, you'll find that the business owner is usually the first one there, works through the whole day, usually the last one to leave at the end of the day. The business owner's got a beautiful home, a house on the hill, beautiful cars, a beautiful life, vacations, a boat in the yacht basin. They're not lucky. They just worked all the time. They work. If you work three extra hours, start earlier, work harder, stay later, you'll add six hours of productive work to your day. There seems to be a direct relationship between self-discipline and success in, in, in every part of life. Well, how do you discipline yourself? He, you make a list of everything you have to do during the day. You set priorities on your list, and then you start on your most important task, first thing, in time management. The number one reason that people don't succeed is because they can't discipline themselves to do the planning and preparation. 
and then the hard work necessary. Just select your most important task and then work on it single-mindedly will double and triple and even five times the quality and quantity of your output, your productivity and eventually your income. This is one of the most powerful of all time management techniques. This means that when you start with a task, you don't do anything else until that task is complete. Task completion motivates you to complete more tasks. And the bigger the task that you complete, the happier you feel. And the more motivated you are to complete even bigger tasks. This is one of the great secrets of success known by top people. How do you practice visualization? You create clear, vivid, exciting, emotional pictures of your goals as if they, they were already a reality. See your goal there. They were already achieved. Imagine yourself enjoying the accomplishment of the goal and visualizing. Take a few moments to create the emotions that would accompany the successful achievement of your goal. We say, get the feeling if you would be proud and happy. Visualization is perhaps the most powerful faculty of value to help you achieve your goals faster than you ever thought possible. When you use a combination of clear goals combined with visualization and emotionalization, you activate your superconscious mind. Your superconscious mind is perhaps the most powerful faculty that you have available to you. Your superconscious mind activates the law of attraction and begins attracting into your life people, circumstances, ideas, and resources that will help you achieve your goals even faster. The incredible thing about goal mastery is that it's really life mastery. And the sooner you begin to develop successful habits, the sooner you'll reap the financial, personal, and professional rewards that go along with them. Practice and repetition over time, and we can override bad habits with good habits. There are some habits that are good to have because they make things automatic and easy. You don't even have to think about them. Ed Foreman said the rule of success, good habits are hard to form but easy to live with. Bad habits are easy to form but hard to live with. The rule is, to form good habits and make them your masters. So what you say to yourself, if I had a habit of being punctual, a habit of planning every day in advance, it's what would serve my life. Surprise you look around and find really successful people, they have these habits and nobody had them to start with. With regard to habits, everything is hard before it's easy. The reason that people do not develop good habits is that they're lazy and undisciplined. They just simply cannot stick to it until the habit locks in and becomes automatic and easy. Once the habit is locked in, it's easier to do it than not to do it because it becomes your new comfort zone. Discipline is the master key to riches. And this is really the most important key of all. The ability to discipline yourself, to do it whether you feel like it or not, to just keep on keeping on until it becomes a habit. Every step you take toward that becoming more disciplined actually raises your self-esteem and self-confidence and makes it easier for you to take the next step. And it's the foundation skill that makes everything possible. If you develop discipline, you can accomplish anything in life for the rest of your life. Whether you're a college graduate and learn stuff that you need to learn, you can do stuff that, that you want to do. You know that you can persist and discipline yourself to get through the courses and the final exams. The reference group is really important. People that you go to church with, people in your political party who believe the same way you are. Your choice of a reference group determines 95% of your success because you always strive to act like your reference group. It's so important when you start to associate with better, more successful people, you start to become like them and think like them and feel like them and walk into talk and dress and act like they do. Two times during the day when your subconscious is most open to new information. The first is at nighttime just before you fall asleep. If you write out your goals before you go to bed, your mind works on your subconscious mind works on your goals all night long. And in the morning, you'll wake up with great ideas. Sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night with an idea that's fantastic to achieve your goals that you can then implement the next day. So just before you fall asleep, write down your goals. But as you fall off to sleep, think about your goals. Visualize your goals as complete. Imagine your goals. Think about success. The second thing is in the morning, the first hour after you wake up, when you wake up in the morning, your mind is most amenable to new suggestions. If you think of yourself in a negative way from the past, always cancel it. When you make a mistake, you respond with, uh, next time I'll do it this way, next time I'll do it that way. And what that does, it cancels the mistake and forces you to face the future. And the future is always bright. Remember, 
You become what you say to yourself. You become what you think about. You become what you teach. A proven way to speed up your mental programming is to express an attitude of confident expectations. Everything is going to work out fine. Don't worry. It'll be all right. We'll be there. We'll be fine. It'll work out. Something will happen. And something always happens for these people because an attitude of confident expectations is the mental chemical. The more positive you are, the more confident you expect that the things will work out, the faster they work out. Everything um, that's happening in your life is part of a big plan to make you a uh, big success. Have this attitude that everything that's happened, every mistake, every failure you've ever had in your life was sent to you as a gift to help you to be successful. The negative person always looks the gift horse in the mouth. They always look at it and say, why should this happen to me? The positive person, when they have a reversal, says, what can I learn from this that will help me to be better in the future? What can I learn that will help me to be better? What is the lesson that's been sent to me as a gift to help me to be successful for the rest of my life? I realize that when you have a major setback or difficulty, it's been sent to you as a gift, as long as your goal is clear. It's a gift. It's a lesson to help you to succeed. It is not a stumbling block. It is a stepping stone to success. So look for the good in everything that happened. The big lie theory now. The big lie theory says if you repeat any statement over and over again often enough, even the most intelligent person will come to believe it. The great truth says that when you decide that you want to double your income or lose weight or start your own business or become financially prosperous and you decide it because of your natural skepticism and your natural negativity and all the experiences you've had in the past that have caused you to be doubtful, to question whether it's possible, you'll have a big D or disbelief. The day will be disbelief. You want it. It would be nice, but you'll disbelieve it, you are. Each time you say it, you'll disbelieve it. It becomes, you begin to believe it less and less, like you get a raise, or you get an idea, or you get a promotion, or something happens with a new product, and you start thinking, hey, hey, and you're making more money. You're saying, hey, wait a minute, maybe there is something to this, maybe it is possible, and it's a scary thought, and you start to develop a little bit of belief, a little tiny B, maybe. Maybe there's a one chance at 100 that I could do it, and then you keep repeating it, and you begin to believe it more and more. Your belief starts to grow and grow until you reach the point in a certain period of time where your belief is just as great and as deeply entrenched as your disbelief. First of all, you believe it'll disbelieve, 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 and then you start to believe and believe it starts to materialize in your life. It just starts to come true for you so that you can be and have anything you want, anything you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis you can have. It'll be completely black. There'll be no need education at all of achieving that goal. But at a certain point, it'll start to appear and get clearer and clearer. And there will be in your life. Are you tired of feeling like time is slipping through your fingers? Do you find yourself constantly overwhelmed by tasks, yet never truly accomplishing what matters most? If so, you're not alone. In today's fast-paced world, it's all too easy to fall into the trap of wasting precious time on activities that yield little to no value. But what if I told you that you have the power to reclaim control over your time and create a life filled with purpose and fulfillment? What if I showed you that by making a few simple changes, you could break free from the cycle of busyness and start living each day with intention and clarity? Today we embark on a journey to explore the art of time mastery, the art of stopping wasting your time and instead using it wisely to create the life you desire. From procrastination to distractions, we'll uncover the common pitfalls that rob us of our most valuable resource and learn how to overcome them. So, if you're ready to take back control of your time and unlock your full potential, join me as we discover the secrets to stopping wasting your time and start living with purpose, passion, and productivity. Everyone wants to be successful, and you achieve success by solving problems for other people. The bigger the problem, or the more often you solve it for more people, the more successful you'll be, you'll make more money, you'll be given more, you'll be happier, and so on. But you also succeed by solving problems for yourself. So, 
When faced with a setback or adversity, what you do is ask yourself, what can I do now? What is my next step? How can I solve this? What can I do more or less of? What should I start doing or stop doing? And the idea of simply giving up never occurs to you. That's off the table. The only thing being considered is how to deal with this. And you become intensely solution oriented. I have taught complete half day and full day courses on how to learn problem solving and decision making. I have written books and audio programs about it because what we do in life from beginning to end is solve problems. If you look at your business card, you could take off any title it has and simply write problem solver because your whole life from dawn till dusk, you'll be solving problems. Small problems like running out of toothpaste at home and big problems like a client canceling an order, among others. You spend your time solving problems and making decisions. The better you become at this, to the point where it becomes an automatic response, people will start coming to you and saying, look, I've got this problem, and you seem to solve problems as well. What can we do? So you ask questions. What exactly is the problem? How did it happen? When did it happen? Where did it happen? Who does it affect? What are the different solutions we can consider? And so on. I teach this all the time so that people, instead of reacting to a problem with anger or disappointment, respond constructively. They say, wait a minute, whatever it is, I can solve it. I just have to find a way to fix it. And soon it becomes automatic. They inhale, exhale, solve the problem. And it never occurs to them that they can't do it. It's just a matter of time. Many solutions don't work. Sometimes you'll have solutions that don't work at all, that are very costly or even fatal. And there's not much you can do about those things. But in general, most things can be resolved. I come from a poor background. My parents never had money. They were hard workers. My father was a carpenter and my mother was a nurse. I left school without graduating and worked in manual jobs for several years. Then I got into sales when I couldn't find a manual job anymore, like most people in sales nowadays. And then I started asking myself a question that changed my life. And the question is, why are some people more successful than others? Why does this happen? I looked around and saw people who were 23 or 24 years younger than me, who were doing better than me, and they weren't smarter than me. Some of them were even less intelligent. One of the things I say is that nothing will infuriate you more than seeing someone who is less intelligent than you doing better. You wonder, how can this idiot be doing so well? And I started asking this question in sales. I began to ask myself, why are some salespeople more successful than others? And I did something that very few people do. I later found out that I went to the top salespeople and asked them why they were so successful and they told me what they were doing. I did it and sold more. So people asked, how come you're making so many sales? So I told them and they did it and their sales went up. When I got into the business world, I asked managers, how do you run a business like this? How do you organize it? And they told me and I did it. Therefore, one of the greatest principles of success you'll find is learning from the experts, learning from people who are already demonstrating the results you want to achieve. Read their books, listen to their programs, attend their courses, learn from them, and always they will tell you, you can save yourself years of hard work just by learning from people who have already learned it themselves. My favorite word in life is clarity. The clearer you are about what you're trying to achieve, the faster you'll reach it. In fact, people with clear goals and plans and written ones with priorities achieve 10 times more in life than those without them. It's very simple. It's the 10 times factor. Make sure everyone working with you has crystal clear clarity about what their job is. Be clear about your top three most important tasks and help everyone else to have clarity about their top three most important tasks. This way, everyone will always be working on the three most important things they can do and hire other people who can perform the task at a lower cost than your top people to free them up from small tasks so they can do the things that contribute most to your overall goals. That's the leader's task. Decide on your goals and your most important goal. And then each day start your day with a list. The best time to make a list is the night before. Because when you make a list the night before for the next morning, all kinds of ideas for the list occur to you. It's like goals for the day. Then you look at your list and say, if I could only do one thing on this list, what activity, what task would I want to make sure I completed before leaving town? For a month, that becomes your most important task of the day. Now the concept of eating the frog 
comes from a story where they say that if the first thing you do in the morning is to eat a live frog, you'll have the satisfaction of going through the day knowing that probably the worst thing that could happen to you is eating a live frog. And the two corollaries of this principle are, if you have to eat two frogs, eat the ugliest one first. Now the frog is your biggest task. It's the one you're most likely to procrastinate on. It's also the one that will have the biggest positive impact on your career if you do it now. So if you have two really important tasks, do the most important one first. We say do the worst first, do the biggest first. And the second corollary is that if you have to eat a frog anyway, it's not worth sitting and looking at it for too long. So what you do is you start with that task. When I've given this talk in corporations, they often come out and make bronze frogs for all their executives. The bronze frog is placed on the executive's desk. And when they get to work, the first thing they see is the frog. Or they place it on top of the plant, the first thing they see is the frog. And it reminds them to start and do the worst first. The task that has the biggest ramifications first. Then you discipline yourself to work focused on that task, no matter what happens. If you get distracted, you return to the task, like a gyroscope returning to center. You stay on that task because you've decided that everything else is a relative waste of time compared to this task. It doesn't mean it's a waste of time, but in relation to this task, everything else is secondary or worse. If you can do that and develop the habit of doing it, You'll double your productivity on the first day, and it will keep increasing for the rest of your career. You'll be so productive, you'll get more responsibilities, more opportunities. But here's the wonderful thing. Everyone wants to feel like winners. So how do you get the feeling of winning? Simple answer, you win. Well, how do you win? Well, you cross the finish line first. Now, fortunately, in life, what successful people do, and I learned this after many years, is so important. They set goals for themselves that they can't cross. So if you complete a task of some value, it's like winning a little, and you feel like a winner. You start, you work, you complete the task. Even if all you do is wash your car and clean the interior, you step back. You feel happy because when, gee, your brain releases endorphins, and endorphins are called nature's happy drug, and they make you feel happy, your self-esteem goes up, your self-confidence increases, and you feel happier and friendlier. You're actually a more charming person, believe it or not. When you set up a task and complete it, you feel like a winner, your endorphins go up, your self-esteem improves, and your self-confidence increases. Now, if you have a to-do list and choose to do your most important task and complete it, you experience an emotion called endorphin rush. Your brain releases endorphins that flood your system and make you feel euphoric. You almost laugh out loud. You're happy. Your heart rate goes up. You're smiling. Sometimes you stay and work late into the night to complete a task, and you do it at 2 or 3 in the morning, even though you should be exhausted. You're happy. You can't sleep. You walk around, watch TV, because you feel great. So what winners do is recreate this feeling over and over until it becomes a habit. They recreate this feeling over and over until it becomes a positive addiction. Now, positive addiction is a very interesting topic. You can develop a negative addiction to an illegal drug, or you can develop a positive addiction to endorphin. Positive addictions are fueled by setting and completing important tasks. Tasks that play a significant role in your life. Some say you don't lose your spontaneity if you're always working on the main tasks. You're not happy all the time, and you're respected and appreciated by the people around you. You feel proud and have a positive self-image. People appreciate you and you earn more money. What's there to complain about? So, it's something very simple and that's why the book transforms people's lives. It takes you from just being to being successful. Make a list, identify your most important task, start with that, and stick with it until it's done. But world-class people have a much bigger vision of what's possible for them. One of the techniques I learned many years ago from an expert is called from X to 10X, which means imagining you could go from X, your current income, to 10 times X, 10 times your current income. And your first response to that is that it's completely absurd. There's no way I could increase my income 10 times. It's not possible. Then I'll ask the audience, is there any chance you could increase your income 10 times over your lifetime? Because there might be a chance of one and everybody will say, well, maybe one chance in 1,000. Then I'll say, how many people here since you took your first job until now have already doubled their income? All hands go up, tripled it, most hands, quadrupled it, many hands. I'll say, so you've already doubled and tripled your income. All you need to do now is to do the same thing you did to double and triple your income. 
and you'll double and triple it again. And then you'll have to increase your income 10 times. And there are people all over the world who earn 10 times more than you. And they're no better or smarter than you. And what this does is expand your thinking because most of us start to develop narrow thinking around our current income and then adjust our lives, adjust our appetites. The restaurants we go to, the food we eat, the house we live in, the clothes we wear, the car we drive. We force our entire world to fit our current income, while successful people create a vision. Here's an interesting point. Peter Drucker said that if you don't have a vision of being a world leader when you start your business at your kitchen table, you probably won't ever be very successful. So if you're starting your business at a kitchen table, imagine you could be a world leader and then ask the question, if I were the world leader in my field, how would I be different from today? How would my company be different from today? We were talking about Steve Jobs and Apple Computer. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak started in a garage with the idea of putting together parts and making a little Apple computer that people could have at home. Bill Gates and Microsoft started with the idea that if they could make it usable, you could have a PC on every desktop. Now, as we reflect on the visionary insights of leaders like Steve Jobs, we're reminded of the transformative power of taking that first bold step towards our aspirations. Jobs' audacious vision of a personal computer in every home revolutionized the way we live and work, despite initial skepticism from industry giants. Indeed, Jobs' relentless pursuit of innovation serves as a poignant reminder that greatness lies just beyond the confines of our comfort zones. As Brian Tracy aptly puts it, the first step is often the most daunting. It's the leap of faith that propels us out of familiar territory and into uncharted waters. Yet it's precisely this willingness to embrace discomfort that paves the way for exponential growth and boundless possibilities. Like a chick breaking free from its shell, each step forward builds momentum, fueling our confidence, creativity, and resilience. So, as we embark on our own journey of personal and professional development, let us heed the wisdom of visionaries like Jobs and Tracy. Let us embrace the discomfort of the unknown, take that pivotal first step towards our dreams, knowing that it is the catalyst for unleashing our full potential and reshaping our reality. And this is what sets successful people apart. They have a great idea of what is possible, and then they take the first step. When I started studying self-made millionaires in my 30s, because I realized that I had always wanted to be a millionaire but had never studied them. 8% of self-made millionaires when asked how they became millionaires with all the competition said hard work. Hard work is the most important thing. They said that it's not a miracle that they weren't smarter, that they didn't get good grades, that they didn't come from a wealthy family, but that they were going to work harder than anyone else. And that was their basic personality. Anyway, work harder than anyone else. And I've never found an exception to that all over the world. In every language and culture, successful people work harder than the average person and very hard. The average successful person works six days a week, 59 hours at the beginning of their career, sometimes seven days a week and 80 hours. But the average is 59 hours, six days a week. I was listening to an interview with a very successful Hollywood entrepreneur. And the interviewer asked him, what do you do on weekends or in your spare time? He said after a pause, I don't know any successful person who works less than six days a week. Everyone works on weekends. That's what successful people do. There are also long nights. And unfortunately, many people were never told that if they want to be successful because everyone wants to be successful and no one is better or smarter than them, they have exactly the same skills. Just like you can drive a car, you can succeed, you can become rich. These wealthy people are people who simply worked harder than the average person and worked harder for a long time. All negativity in your life, all failures and frustrations, all negative emotions come from your lack of acceptance of responsibility. If you look at our political problems, our welfare and our problems around the world today, you will find that at the heart of it are people who will not accept responsibility, blame someone or something else for their problems. And if you do that, you must first realize that it is not true. You are responsible for your own life. No one points a gun at your head and forces you to do or not do something. Accept responsibility. Don't blame other people. I teach my audience in my two-day seminar to repeat, I am responsible, I am responsible, I am responsible, and to have absolutely no resentment, blame, anger towards anyone or anything else, because all it does is consume you. It devours you. So you will find that many people only think about other people who have hurt them or done them wrong, 
and need to be punished and so on. And you've already heard me talk about how never to think about other people in negative terms because it hurts you. It's like hitting yourself in the face with your own fist. As we draw this journey to a close, let us reflect on the profound insights we've uncovered and the transformative changes we've embraced. From the moment we set out, we confronted the pervasive habit of wasting time head on, determined to reclaim our most precious resource. Now, armed with newfound knowledge and empowered by actionable strategies, we stand on the threshold of a new beginning, a life where each moment is cherished and every action is purposeful. No longer will we allow the sands of time to slip through our fingers. Instead, we commit to seizing each day with intention and gratitude. But our journey does not end here. It is merely the beginning of a lifelong practice, a commitment to prioritizing what truly matters and living each day to the fullest. So as we bid farewell to old habits and welcome the dawn of a new era, let us carry with us the unwavering determination to stop wasting our time and start embracing the boundless opportunities that await. Thank you for joining me on this transformative journey. May your days be filled with purpose, productivity, and profound moments of joy as you continue to make the most of your time and create a life that truly reflects your deepest desires. Our goal setting has seven steps. You can use these seven steps for the rest of your life. Step number one is decide exactly what you want. Most people don't do that. Only the top 10% of people are absolutely clear about what they really, really want. What do you want financially? What do you want for your health? What do you want for your family? Be very clear. Be specific. Remember, your subconscious and your superconscious mind can only work to help you achieve a goal when the goal is clear. Step number two is write it down. Only 3% of adults have written goals and everyone else works for them. Write it down. This is called a psychoneuromotor activity where you actually write the goal down physically on paper and it activates all your mental powers. It programs it into your hard drive and then your subconscious works on it 24 hours a day until it's achieved. Once you write it down, step number three is set a deadline. Set a very clear, specific target to aim at. This acts like a forcing system for your subconscious and your superconscious and your superconscious minds. And what it does is it motivates and drives you forward to achieve that goal. So, set a deadline. If it's a big enough goal, set sub-deadlines and break it down into parts and then keep thinking about the deadline. Step number four is make a list. Make a list of everything that you could think of that you could think of that you could do to achieve that goal. And keep writing until the list is complete. If you think of something new, write it on the list. There's something wonderful about breaking things down onto a list. Henry Ford once said the biggest goal in the world can be achieved if you just break it down into enough small steps. Some people ask the question, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer, of course, is one bite at a time, but you've got to divide it into bites. Step number five is to organize the list. How do you organize the list? You organize it two ways. First, by sequence, what is the order in which you have to do things? And second of all, by priority, what is more important, what is less important? What is less important? And remember the 80-20 rule. The first 20 of things you do in the achievement of a goal usually account for 80s of the results that you get. Now uh, you have a goal broken down by sequence and priority and you have a plan. A person with a goal and a plan can accomplish extraordinary things, sometimes beyond their imagination. Yeah. Step number six is to take action. Do something. Move quickly. Do something immediately to achieve your goal. And step number seven, and this is the great one, do something every day. Do something every day that moves you towards your most important goal, whatever it happens to be. So. Here's the exercise and this is what's going to make it all come to life for you. What you do is you make a list of 10 goals that you would like to achieve in the next year or so. Write them down on a piece of paper. This may take you about 3 to 5 minutes but it could change your life. Then you look over your list of goals and you say if I could only achieve one goal on this list, which one goal would have the greatest positive impact on your life? Now whatever that goal is, 
Put a circle around it. This becomes your major definite purpose. This becomes your focal point. This becomes your point of concentration. Now you can work on the other goals on the side, but this becomes the goal. And you do something all the time on this goal. You write it on a clean sheet of paper. You set a deadline. You make a list of everything you could do to achieve the goal. You organize the list by sequence and priority. You do something immediately, and then you do something immediately, and then you do something every day. When you wake up in the morning, you think about the goal. And all day long, you think about the goal. Yeah. And I can promise you this, if you follow the seven part process, plus the ten goal list, plus the selection of one key goal, your life will change in the most profound ways. You will start to make progress that's completely beyond your current imagination. Write out your goals. All goals have to be in writing, by the way. If you don't have your goals in writing, then they're not ready goals at all. They're merely wishes. And as they wish is merely a goal without any energy behind it. Have your goals in writing. Write them out very specifically and clearly. And then do this every single morning. Rewrite your major goals in the first person, singular as though they already existed. Rewrite your major goals every single morning. Now, this should take you about two to four minutes, maybe five. And you can do it all in a paragraph. For instance, if your goal is to earn $50,000 a year every single morning, right? I earn $50,000 a year. If your goal is to be excellent in real estate, say, I am an excellent salesperson in my field. If your goal is to weigh a certain number of pounds, if your goal is to enjoy a certain kind of life, write down your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed today, every single morning. And then every single evening, Take about five to ten minutes instead of watching television. Just before you turn on the television, say, wait a second, I've got to review my progress. Uh, sit down and review what you've done in the course of the day and say, what have I done right today? What have I done right? That's moved me toward my goals. The second question is, what would I do differently if I had today to do over again? Those four steps, by the way, Include rewriting your goal each morning, reviewing them in the evening, and asking yourself those two questions. What did I do right? What did I do that moved me toward my goals today? And what would I do differently if I had the day to live over? If you'll ask yourself those two questions in the next 30 days, you'll accomplish more than you accomplished in the last six months. This is the most incredible method I've ever seen. I learned it some years ago. Just rewrite your goals every morning because every time you write your goals down, you're programming them into your subconscious mind. When you program them into your subconscious mind, you set up a field of vibration within your brain and this law of attraction, based on this field of vibration, attracts into your life people and circumstances that harmonize with your dominant thoughts. Everybody here has had the experience of starting to read about a subject, think about a subject, become interested in a subject, and suddenly you started to attract into your life books, magazines, articles, conversations, people, opportunities to expand on that subject. If you've had that experience before, what you do is you create a force field which we cannot explain scientifically, but it is a field of vibration that goes out from you, that tracks back into your life, everything that you need to realize your dominant goals. And everybody's had the experience of writing down their goals at the beginning of the year and opening up the envelope at the end of the year and finding that 80 of the goals have been accomplished. Have you ever had that experience? Absolutely remarkable, isn't it? The only problem with goals is that we don't set enough of them and we don't set them highly enough. You can have anything you want. Imagine you could have anything that you want. Anything that you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis. You can have anything that you are crystal clear about wanting and are willing to pay the price to get. You can have. So clarity is the key. Be clear about what you want. Be clear about what you have to do to get it. Be clear about your vision. Be clear about your vision. Be clear. Speak. Walk. Talk. And act the last thing before you sleep. The first thing in the morning. Think about and visualize your goals as reality. See your goal as though it already existed. Your subconscious mind is only activated by affirmations and pictures that are received in the present tense. 
So see your goal vividly just before you go to sleep. See yourself performing at your best. See the situations that you're facing working out exactly the way you want them to. Especially see yourself living the kind of life that you want to live. See yourself in the kind of relationships, the kind of health, the kind of car, the kind of home you really want. Hmm. Visualize just before you fall asleep at night. And the first thing you do when you get up in the morning is to feed yourself mental picture. These are the two times of the day when your subconscious mind is most receptive to new programming. Just before you fall asleep and just when you wake up. Well, the law of cause and effect is very simple. What is the cause? It's your belief, your absolute clarity about the goal that you want. What is the effect? It's the goal coming into your life. The law of beliefs is what you believe in. You believe that you must ultimately achieve this goal unswervingly. And that belief creates your reality because you begin to see the whole world different. The law of expectation. You confidently expect that everything that happens is part of a plan to help bring you towards your goal. The law of attraction. What do you attract? You attract people, ideas, and circumstances into your life, help you achieve your most important goal. The law of subconscious. The law of correspondence. Your outer world corresponds to your inner world of goal setting. The law of subconscious activity. You continually program your subconscious mind with a clear picture of your goal and your subconscious mind arranges all your words and actions so that they fit a pattern consistent with achieving that goal. And the law of habit is that you think about your goal repeatedly over and over again until it becomes a habit to wake up in the morning and think all day about your goal. So all you need to do to raise your self-confidence, your self-esteem, and your level of attainment high is to have an absolutely crystal clear goal and work on it every single day. Now here are two things that you can do all day long to keep your mind and emotions focused on your goals and financial success. First, listen to audio programs in your car when you drive around. Continue feeding your mind with a steady stream of high quality educational, motivational material that moves you towards your goal. Sometimes one idea you hear on an audio program can change your life. To imagine no limitations. When you look at life, the starting point of setting goals is for you to throw off all your mental limitations and let your mind roam freely across the entire universe of possibilities. Your primary job at the beginning is to allow yourself to dream big dreams and then determine exactly what it is that you want out of life in every area and in every dimension. Decide what's right before you decide what's possible. Imagine that you could be or have or do virtually anything that you really want to as long as you know exactly what it is first. Make up a dream list. Temporarily imagine that you have no limitations of time, money, knowledge, contacts, experience or education. Imagine that anything you can write down is possible for you. Remember, anything that you can clearly define and crystallize on paper is possibly possible if you want it long enough and hard enough. And if you're willing to make whatever efforts and sacrifices are necessary, there are no unrealistic goals. As we say, only unrealistic timeline. The very act of writing your goals down sets the whole universe to work in your favor and activates all the mental laws to help you. In fact, Many people have had the experience of writing out a list of goals on New Year's Day, putting the list away and not referring to it again till the end of the year, and then finding at the end of the year that 80% of the goals have been achieved, sometimes in the most amazing ways. The very act of writing big challenging goals causes three things to happen. First, your self-concept improves and your self-confidence goes up immediately just by writing down some big goals. The act of setting goals requires self-confidence and simultaneously builds self-confidence. Having the courage to write down what you really want improves your self-image and raises your self-esteem. The action itself generates a feeling of greater personal power and ability. Second, when you write down goals, you tap into your mental and emotional powers. Goal setting actually gives you a burst of physical and mental energy. Your heart rate and your respiratory rate speed up. 
the very act of goal setting is inherently exciting. Sometimes we say we're feeling listless. Make a list. It's true. It's like stepping on the accelerator of your own mental and physical potential. And if you do this every day, write your goals down over and over. The results can be amazing. Finally, commit your goals to paper. The very fact that you have committed a goal to paper dramatically increases the likelihood that you will achieve that goal. Your mind is structured in such a way that you cannot write down a goal clearly on paper without simultaneously having the ability to somehow attain it. The most important question is always how badly do you want it? And here's an interesting discovery. There's a miracle that takes place between the head and the hand. It's when you write something down, psychoneuro, motor activity. It actually helps you to understand it with greater clarity. It stimulates creativity, enables you to see it. The fact is that becoming a goal setter, so you're right, setting and working on goals all the time increases your likelihood of success by 10 times. Fact is, the very act of setting goals, writing them down dramatically increases the likelihood of you achieving them. It gives you tremendous clarity and it also activates a whole series of other powers that you don't know about. Your ability to set goals and to make plans for their accomplishment is the master skill of success. This ability developed through practice will do more to assure your eventual success than anything else you ever learn. The 1090 rule says that the first 10% of time that you spend planning and organizing will often account for 90% of the value of the entire process. So here's a powerful but simple method for setting and achieving goals that I've learned over the years. First, decide exactly what you want. Clarity is the starting point of great success. And second, write it down in detail and set a deadlines. If set some deadlines if necessary. Hired, determine the additional knowledge, skills, and abilities you will need to achieve your goal and how you're going to acquire them. Fourth, determine the obstacles and difficulties that you will have to overcome to achieve your goal and organize them in the order of size and importance. The fifth key to goal setting is to determine the people and groups and organizations whose help you will require and decide what you will have to do for them to earn their assistance. And sixth, make a detailed plan broken down by activity, organized by priority and sequence. What is most important? What must be done first? What must be done before something else is done? And seventh, perhaps the most important, is to take action on your plan immediately. Do something every day to move you toward your most important goal. Get going and keep going and keep going. At each stage of your life, whenever you're confronted with the need to make new choices, to set new goals, sit down and think through them using these seven steps. Always think on paper and always be willing to revise your plans when you get new information. Keep working on your plans until they're complete and then execute them boldly. Psychologists recently have concluded when I started teaching 25 years ago that as you feel yourself moving towards something that is important to you, your self-esteem and self-confidence go up. You feel happy. You feel powerful. You feel strong. You feel a surge of energy and elation. You're more creative. All of your best qualities emerge. How do you blot out all the negatives in your life? You think about your goal. Whenever, say, you think of something that makes you unhappy or negative, you swing your thoughts, often like a searchlight. And you think about your goal and you talk about your goal and you work on your goal and you work on your goal because your mind can only hold one thought at a time. And if you're totally determined to achieve a single goal and you think about it and work on it every day, eventually all the other things will fall away.